That's actually the, the greatest view in, in Cairo. Of course, we have the two primary pyramids and the, the Sphinx there. If you come on the journey, you'll get to stand there in awe. We go into the temples. We clear the space. You know, we maintain silence. We, we are there before anybody else, right, right before the sun rises on some of the, the, uh, you know, the journeys. And this is the uh, Temple of Philae, uh, the uh, Isis temple. And this is right at sunrise. And now the sun perfectly comes through these certain arches and uh, illuminates the entire temple. This is the, uh, that's the temple of Hatshepsut, the, uh, the uh, queen pharaoh, was the only female to reign Egypt and until you know, the, the sun was old enough to, to reign. Pictures of Egypt and the hieroglyphs never do them justice. Never. When you just look at the precisionness, the, the forethought, the levels of dimensional understanding. You know, there are certain sites that we go to that cannot be dated, you know, and have no glyphs, no hieroglyphs whatsoever, no homages to anybody. But the, the construction are, is beyond our comprehension. There's 100 ton, 200 ton slabs perfectly placed on top of each other where and and these elements came 500 700 miles up or, or below you know uh, Egypt and placed precision in the middle of nowhere to create these structures you know so the Osirion was a major energy activator to be able to construct what exists you know in the ancient times the pyramids uh, these these ancient these ancient sites and uh, the SETI temple is the one, you've seen the hieroglyph where the, the helicopters and the hovercraft, you've seen that picture, it's been on you know, the internet forever. But you go to SETI, SETI's temple and you go into the grand arena and you look up and way up high, about 22 feet up, is that glyph. With the original flower of life is found at the Osirion. And you'll see it, it's on a granite uh, slab and it looks like it was laser etched. And then you look again, there's another one. There's three of them. These perfectly engraved flower of life embedded in this red granite. And they're flawless. Karnak, you know, what they found is, is all the lions. You know, when, uh, when we, when, you know, it's pretty fascinating, you know, how far, you know, some of, of these, uh, these symbolisms can go, like at uh, Luxor. Uh, where they saw all the sphinxes, those little, those, those small sphinxes. Uh, they accidentally, were, they were building these other uh, uh, dwellings a few years ago, and they stumbled upon all these other sphinxes. They're continuous, they go for miles. All these hundreds, they're finding hundreds of them, and they're still digging them up. It's like absolutely fascinating to see this. Well, the nice thing about getting special permission to uh, go to the pods of the sphinx, and to spend two hours privately into the uh, Great Pyramid uh, by ourselves and uh, one hour at the Pause of the Sphinx. This is very special permission. You don't see uh, very often people where, standing where I am. I said, okay, right here, just take pictures with your cameras. And they did, and I looked at everybody's cameras, not a single orb in the photo. I said, okay, now ask the orbs to be seen. Realize that they are here and ask them to vibrate and to match the frequency of the, of the spectrum of your camera, so it will now show up in your photo. And they did, and about 40% of the people started getting orbs. By three cycles, everyone was getting orbs, hundreds of orbs by this time, because we kept calling them in. This is a very powerful place here. This is actually uh, the uh, Isis temple at Dendara, the Hathor temple. Uh, this is a, 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 a temple in the back uh, that is uh, focused for Isis, and it's a very beautiful power spot. This is one of the Hathors that's still intact. As you can see, you know, the geometry of it's very unique. The precision of it is very unique. When you walk into Dendara, there's Hathor faces. There's six of them that greet you on the walk uh, to, the, uh, to the temple. And if you open yourself up, there will be a communication exchange that happens. Some of us <coughs> are called to do particular things. And sometimes we don't, we don't know why, but uh, on this particular journey, I was given specific information to construct a particular device and to bring it to Egypt and to activate it in a particular chamber. And this is, this is in the Sekhmet chamber uh, in Karnak. 
And this is one of the most powerful uh, temples that, that, again, you can walk into. A uh, guy, his name is Daryl, was with his girlfriend. She's very spiritually active. He was like, he'd rather be playing golf and watching the sports. Very 3D guy. And uh, he says, you know what? You know, I've been, this is my second trip. And, uh, you know, I just, I'm not getting those orbs or the crap that everyone else is getting. And I just don't feel it. And I just looked at him and I said, well, I hope you experience something so profound, you won't be able to explain it. And he went, yeah, whatever. So we moved into the next corridor. Pictures were being taken. And then during this whole activation, this, I'm sorry, this is after I was done. But now the next photo is pictures that the professional photographer took after he took this photo. He went into the Sekhmet chamber and he received this. Daryl received, Daryl, the non-believer, started taking these photos and he took another photo. And then he took another photo. And that then after this photo, a gentleman, or what we like to call a guardian, came in and he started to, he stood next to the Sekhmet statue and people just went and started to kneel and he started to anoint them. And he was doing this about five or six people. Daryl took another photo. Now you have to look at this very carefully. As you can see, there's energy coming from Sekhmet, coming from the top of the head of the of the guardian and the energy that's going up and out that looks like two hands. Now, I promise you, these photos are untouched in any way, shape, or form. They are original photos. My daughter and I were there getting that awesome shot. That's her cuddled up in my arms because it was very windy. She was going through uh, a very big uh, illusion. She was, she was struggling in this, in this world. She was heavily medicated. And I just was guided and said, you have to bring your daughter. This is the time. And I didn't do anything on this trip. I just knew I had to go there with my daughter. And uh, everyone knew it. I said, I'm just there for my daughter on this trip. And uh, she had some pretty profound shifts. Uh, five days in, she was off all her meds. And she hasn't been on them since. And she's, you know, like A's and, A's and B plus student in school. You know, she just, she just needed an awakening. She just needed to realize that the world was not just this five square miles that she was living in. And she got into that country. She had an amazing flowering. It was really beautiful to witness. And the time is right. They know that it's time for them to come to the sacred lands and to receive the knowledge that's been waiting there for thousands of years for this knowledge to come forth.